Hi, greetings from home office. I've had a few people asking me questions of how do I teach from home and how do I make it look good? Well, you need some gear and I'll talk about that gear and I'll talk about my setup in this video. We actually have two different setups for teaching from home. One is um, just by the desk and then we have a, a bigger place to shoot videos downstairs. I'll first show this desk setup because this is more feasible for most people. So I have this adjustable desk and it's useful to be able to adjust the height, but you can simply, if you don't have one, you can just put books under your laptop or something like that. The important things that you need for home teaching setups setup are a green screen, some lights, a camera, a cell phone will do, and a microphone. I'll start by showing what the green screen looks like. And I have this, all this gear, I have links on where to buy it, linked on the video description. So this is the green screen and it's a portable thing. And it's basically like, like a green curtain. And how you set it up is that you just uh, extend these legs and then you put it on the floor and then you pull it up. So I'm setting it here behind the chair. I'll, I'll open it and just pull it up. So that's my green background. And how the green background on green screen, screen works is that I have a software on my computer that I'll show in a moment that will uh, eliminate the green background from the video and replace it with whatever is on my screen. And this is like 180 times uh, 150 centimeters. And it's, it's good for one person standing or one person sitting. If you are taller than I am, then you can put some books or something under the green screen to make it a bit taller. Let's go on and see the other gear. So what other gear do you need? Well, you need a camera. Some people use a DSLR, but I also saw that you can use it for recording video on a computer. So I'm just gonna use my cell phone. And there are software that you can use to capture the cell phone camera as a webcam. Then what I need to have is, is a tripod to hold the cell phone. And I have this fairly expensive selfie stick. This is like 70 euros. I went for an expensive option because I want the, uh, the cell phone holder to be sturdy. So I just open it. I put my cell phone here. And then I hook it up on my computer using a cable and then position it against the screen. So once this is hooked up, I'll put it in front of the screen. So whenever I look at the, the students who I see on the screen behind it, it looks like as if I would be looking at the students when I'm just looking at the camera. So one important thing when you talk to somebody is that you look at them into the eyes. And in this case, it means that I have to focus on looking at the camera here and one easy way to accomplish that is to make sure that the camera or the lens is somewhere in the middle of my screen. So I see the students on this screen behind the camera and when I talk to the students, I look at the camera. Another thing that we need is lights. And uh, I have this set of two lights. I got the cheapest possible set of two lights with table stands, so these are actually selfie sticks that I could find on Amazon. And this set of two lights was about 70 euros. So the, the two sticks with lights was as expensive as, as one stick. And these are a bit wobbly, but it doesn't matter because whether your light source is stable or not is not as important as whether your camera is stable. And these connect to a USB power source and I have a power adapter here. I'm going to hook it up and then I'm going to position the lights and then we can switch them on. The lights should come at a 45 degree to your face. So how I position the lights is that they're going to be around here on the left hand side, somewhere here, and then it should be symmetric. And one important thing in, in choosing the lights is that you want to be able to adjust the intensity of the light. So if the light is too intense, then it, um, 
it does not look good. So, so these are adjustable, so you can adjust the brightness and I will go for a, a, a low setting. So something like this would be good in the daylight. Another thing that is worth uh, thinking about is that if you have a dimmer for the lights in your room, then uh, for example I have a light right above me. So if I can dim that a bit, then uh, I don't need to have these lights on such a high setting. So this is the lights, and then uh, what I, I still need is a microphone, and I have this wireless microphone. I wouldn't buy this for, for home studio setup, like, like if I'm teaching by the desk, but I, I got this for another project that I was doing, and for that I need a wireless version. But if you're just teaching by a desk, then I think a, a desk microphone would be better. But since I have this, wireless microphone that connects to the computer, I'm just going to use that. Final thing that I use is this kind of uh, HDMI dongle or HDMI display or fake display. So this is uh, just an HDMI plug that you uh, plug into your computer and the computer thinks that there's a third display connected. So I have basically three displays. I have the laptop display, I have the external display, and then I have this external display. And of course I can see what's on this display, but how I use this fake display is that this is, uh, this is what my students see. So I'm basically uh, setting up a PowerPoint show, and this is my protector, and I'll just use video capture on this fake display to, to stream my presentation with the students. It's probably some, it sounds a bit weird at this point that I have a fake display, but once I show the software setup, then it becomes clear why this is so useful thing. These cost on uh, like seven dollars or seven euros for, for a set of three on Amazon. So this is a really ex inexpensive piece of gear. So altogether, this setup is uh, like 150 euros. The green screen is another 150 euros. So we are talking about the 300 euro investment uh, plus a microphone. Of course, you can try doing without a microphone if you have a quiet room, then just using the laptop microphone might be good enough. So this is what it looks like from the presenter's perspective and everything is set up. And I'm standing a bit behind here so you can see the screen a bit better. So I have the lights here and I have the camera. Then there is the laptop that shows my PowerPoint in the presentation view. And on the main screen, I will have the controls for the stream. And also if I'm using Zoom, that is also shown on there. So that's how I interact with the students. Uh, using this setup, I can, I can either be here talking to the students from Lapland, or I can change the different scenes. I have set up these scenes in a software called OBS, or Open Broadcasting Studio. And for example, if I want to show my PowerPoint presentation, I will switch to uh, the dummy monitor here, which contains the, the PowerPoint slide. It is like a, the presentation, and then I'm standing here. I can see myself on the screen, and I can point to things, uh, things on, on the slide, and the students will see me as if I was in the class in front of them. So, so this is uh, what it looks like, and the important thing is that I need to be looking at the camera. I'll now switch to a uh, screencast to show how you actually set up this system. What kind of software are you? The software that I have is, first I have this Epoch Cam software, which turns your cell phone camera, in this case an iPhone, but it works on Android as well, into a webcam. So I have the camera connected with a cable. It works on Wi-Fi as well, but cable is more reliable. So you install this software, you start the Epoch Cam app on your phone, and then your phone appears as a webcam on your computer. It's fairly easy to set up. Then I have the Open Broadcaster Studio, OBS Studio, which is an open source streaming and broadcasting software. So this is basically a, a software that allows you to do video editing on the go. Let's take a look at the software side of things. So I have the setup now, so I have the lights here, I have the camera over there in front of my main display and I'm capturing my main display. 
So let's take a look at the display arrangement first. So I have basically three screens on the computer. So when I open the system preferences here, I have my main display. This is the laptop display and that is where my PowerPoint is in. So that is the PowerPoint presentation controls. I have PowerPoint on that, that screen and I set uh, the PowerPoint to be in present view. Then this monitor here is not actually a monitor, that is the dummy plug. And that is where the PowerPoint presentation goes. So this is what the students see and this is what you see on, on my screen behind my background. So that is the third screen. I have set a screen capture on the third screen, but the screen is just a dummy plug. It doesn't really exist. And then I have the main monitor here. So you can see in red, this is the other uh, dummy plug. This is the main monitor. So the main monitor contains the zoom call that you see it's the big window here. And then there is the OBS, the Open Broadcaster Studio, which is set up to work as a virtual webcam. The OBS window is set up to be always on top so I can monitor the stream and I can switch between different scenes. So I have set up scenes here. For example, if I don't want to share my screen, I have this, this nice background where I'm in Lapland. If I want to share my, my main screen, then that is also possible. So this is the desktop screen. If I want to uh, do something, show the students. And of course, then I would move the OBS window and, and zoom uh, to, the, to the laptop monitor because to avoid this, this kind of infinite loop. So this is the, uh, the OBS view. And I have the camera, iPhone, and I have the background, which is uh, a fail of fjell in Northern Finland that I really like. And then I have the, uh, the dummy monitor set up here. Let's do a dummy test scene. So that's an empty scene. There is nothing on the scene. You just see a black window because there is really nothing added. Then we need to add um, display capture and the display capture, we can create a new or add an existing one. I'm going to create a new. The good thing about adding existing things is that if you want to, for example, adjust the effects for your camera, which you need to do, uh, for cropping and other kinds of things, then you can just adjust that once and then use the same source in, in all the scenes. So this is demo display capture and um, it just captures one of the screens. We will need to uh, check which display it is. Display number two is our dummy screen which contains the PowerPoint presentation. I'm just going to have OK. So this is everything that we have now. And then we need to add ourselves video capture device. We need to pick, we are going to create a new one. And uh, what it asks us to do is to choose the device. So we have EpoCam, which is the cell phone camera. We have the laptop camera here. So this is the, uh, the computer's laptop's own camera. You can see what the laptop sees. And uh, then there is uh, iPhone, I guess that is some kind of uh, internal iPhone thing, but we're going to use Epoch Cam. And then there's OBS Virtual Camera. So the OBS Virtual Camera is, is something that gives whatever we have here on OBS as a video source for another software. So we're going to pick Epoch Cam. We, we put the presets at high, so we take the full resolution, full HD. What do we need to do now is that we need to remove the green background and we probably need to crop it a bit. What we'll do is we change the filters and first what we add is an effect filter and, and chroma key. So this removes the green background and I'm just gonna have it named the default. Now the default settings work pretty well. So the green background now disappeared. You can see instead of the green background, you can see my presentation behind me. And if you have problems, like if you have bad lighting or your color is not exactly the color green, you can adjust these settings and they, they uh, can make it better. Or if you adjust them to be too strict, then uh, the green screen starts to show instead of the background. So we're just going to close this now. 
or, or this is now the, the proper filter. Then we need to add another filter. We need to add, not there, we need to add a crop filter. So uh, we need to crop out the wall on the side and we need to also crop out this background here. So I'm just gonna have crop here. And then we tell how much we crop. So we need to crop from the top. And uh, so let's, it's a bit of trial and error to see what's a good value. 40 might work. And then we crop, let's, let's try with 150. That's not enough, 160. Not quite enough, 165 and that crops the side and then it we need to crop the other side so this is uh let's try 150 no that's that's the bottom so we we crop 150 here now 160 not enough 180 200 let's try 230 235 and we can see that there's a little bit of um, extra stuff here. So we'll need to adjust the cropping a bit. Let's do 170. So, so this is um, now the camera is set up. We have cropped all the things that we don't want the audience to see. We have eliminated the green background. And uh, then we just position ourselves. This, the, it's a bit laggy now because I'm doing a screen capture and I'm doing this, this OBS Studio thing, so I'm using screen capture on, on QuickTime, but normally it works well. This is just my computer is eight years old, so this is a bit too taxing for the computer. So what we do next is that we adjust the, the, uh, the position, make, make myself a bit smaller, and uh, let's see if I want to be, want to be uh, able to point to the middle of the screen, then this is probably the right size and then I can go to the side and just start talking and presenting. So how do you make this all then be visible on for example Zoom? What you need to do is to uh, click on this start virtual camera and it creates us a source that we can use in Zoom. So if we open Zoom here, so this is now Zoom, we can ha see that there's obvious virtual camera and that allows us to broadcast the things that we see here on Zoom. And this is a way that you can uh, do kind of like a studio quality presentations or close to them from home where you are standing in front of your slides. This is our secondary teaching station or kind of like a home studio that we built into a spare room that we use for, for yoga and, and sports and other kinds of things. So what we have here is just like a green curtain. You can buy these from photography stores. This is a uh, three by three meter and I still need to cut it to the right length costs like 50 euros and then there is the, uh, the rail on, on the roof or ceiling that I attach it to to make it uh, hang there and I'm going to use some kettlebells here to tighten it so I'll just uh, put the kettlebell against the fabric and it's going to uh, keep it nice and tight and I do the same for the other corner so this is the green screen background and uh, what we use if uh, we need to record something bigger uh, or like do something standing with a bit more space at home or if the, uh, if my wife is working in the office room and I have a, like a teaching day then I can come down here. For monitor we got a, a TV here and uh, I, I put our old TV on this, this stand and the TV stand is normally it's normally adjusted to the, the watching height that you would have, but it can be adjusted. You can you can raise it so it can be on like your face height. It's a bit heavy. So this way you can watch the students 
from a big screen while you present. So that's one thing, and uh, the base is like 150 euros. The, the screen, the TV, we have two TVs, so that's no additional cost. And then I also have this uh, instrument table. I don't know what this is used for. I got it from, I guess it's some kind of musical instruments. I got it from Amazon and eventually uh, I got it for free because it was broken in, in transport. Otherwise, this was second hand and uh, maybe like 30 euros. This would be like 70 euros if it was brand new. So this, this holds the laptop and uh, I got some uh, photos here, what the actual setup looks like. We have a ring light and we use iPhone as a camera and this works really well. Pretty much the only problem that we have in the room is that there's a bit of echo as you might hear and we, we might put a, a curtain on the wall or just put some some mattresses on the on the walls. So this is our home setup. I hope you enjoy the video and I, I hope that this gives you ideas on how you can do green screen teaching based on home.